same old trouble Villains always knocking at the door Pretty pictures on the page But nothing ever stays the same Thank you, Vandello, and welcome to Season 7 of Graphically Novel. We can count, Let yeah. us out of here! <laughs> My name is Josh Wasta, a.k.a. Fallout Fury, and with me, as always, is my Conchu, my end credit scene Jake Lockley. Give me the body. <laughs> it's very... He does, he does always want my body. <laughs> well, wanted buried in the yard, but um, at least he didn't call me the hippo, like... Uh, it wouldn't be first, first of all, the hippo was awesome. Oh, okay. Yes. So Fucking not awesome. awesome. I see how it yes. is. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> and with us, as usual, the lovely and talented, the Baronessa, Ms. Jennifer Howland. Thank you, Bear. And you know, I get to get to introduce the guests. In the Jackdaw Parlor. Right? We are all here. Wait, we are all in the same room. At the same time. Or the, the first, time, the first time ever. Right? Yeah. Yes. That's yes. Very true. Yes. It's true. I've been we, here a couple times before. Well, I've been on the podcast a couple times before. Right, but. right, right. Yeah. And yes, re- repeat guest, Justin Stacy. Thank you for being thank here Thank you us. for inviting me for the weekend. It's going to be great. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Justin is here. I uh, got in yesterday uh, for the hour-long trip, and then uh, we ha- hung out last night until well past our bedtime. Yep. Uh, today has been kind of We're chill. feeling it. We're feeling it a little we, bit. We are. We're old. Uh, and then tomorrow is going to be Double or Nothing AEW, and, uh, we're going to, we're going to do some wrestling. Uh. We're going to watch some wrestling. That's right. We're not well, going to do some wrestling. You never know. I mean. No, I know. I am not doing wrestling. I might wrestle. What, what you guys do in the privacy of your own bedroom, we will just <laughs> talk about the next day. We're not doing wrestling. <laughs> Brings a whole new t- new meaning to pile driver, right? <laughs> I don't want to make Josh cry. So for today, <laughs> I noticed how he just glazed right over that. No, sell that shit. <laughs> Moon red love, diggy dum, diggy Yeah. So today we will be doing Moon Knight for our uh, premiere. Um, super excited about it. Justin, uh, when I reached out to you, because you had said you were a fan of I, Moon Knight. I think we brought it up probably the last time I was on the, on the show, which was for Winona Earp, and I think by that time we had already known that it was, there was going to be a show yeah. eventually at some point in the future. I was like, hey, I've actually read a lot of those comics, you know. So yeah, so um, as an been Winona Earp was the last time you were on. That's yeah, a while yeah. ago. Yeah. I was I was last on for Winona Earp, and then previously I was on for uh, Hellstrom. The Hellstrom. Uh, right. right. So so yeah. Other than Winona Earp, then these two because I was going to bring up the Hellstrom connection. Mm-hmm. This is this is something we were actually talking about in the car on the way here yesterday. This Moon Knight's a weird choice. Yeah, and <laughs> even as somebody who is you know, kind of the fan of the character and everything, I was telling Josh, I was like, you know, why why did they look at this, the publication history of this character, which is quite sporadic, and think, let's let's sink some money into this for the MCU. And even I don't know the, the answer to that question. Well, it was to get you Oscar know. Isaac. I mean, I mean, he was already Apocalypse. Well, I, I think that it was, it was, I'm not sure it was an interesting choice um necessarily i think that uh you know there is um reasoning behind it i think that they saw the character and saw that they could do an arc that would be very interesting and i think that being inclusive of other cultures is kind of what they're shooting for other cultures and 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 mental uh yep. you know Mental health? The mental health in general, uh, it's interesting because the comics are hit and miss on how they deal with Stephen. And, and you never actually know if it's Stephen or if it's Mark in right. the comic, right. which is the, which is the right. original personality, right. whereas the show gave us that closure. Um, it's hit and miss on how it deals with uh, 
with that. The whole idea of addressing mental health in an MCU product, and we will eventually get to whether or not we like the comic and like the show, but we're just jumping right into this. Right. It There's is, a lot to dissect. It is I mean, fascinating, the yeah. choice, yeah. and I think that's the answer, is that there are certain things that are going to be just hits. They knew Loki was going to be a right. hit. Right, well, sure. WandaVision, yeah. the right. way that it was setting up right. uh, Doctor Strange... Gonna be a hit. Right. You know? Uh, even, like, there was a little bit of risk with Falcon and the Winter Soldier just because we live right. in a society that racism exists. Yeah. Um, this is a chance. And it's similar to Hellstrom, right? Which only got one season. But it's like, okay, well, we've done all these other shows. We can afford to take a chance. And I think, and I think that's, yeah, what I was... What I was thinking originally was, yeah, you know, there's so much name recognition with Marvel now. They've built that up over however many years it's been now. They can be like, you know, this may not pan out exactly the same way all of our other stuff has, but there's so much name recognition that we'll be able to front load that onto the show, and of course people are going to check it out. Right, because you got Ethan Hawke in in, uh, uh, Oscar Oscar Isaac, Yeah, you know. And so there are a lot of people that may just tune in for that. Right. And then, you know, and, and give respect, I, Oscar Isaac coming right off of Dune. Right. And I was just <laughs> going to say, I went and watched it because I was like, I have no idea what this is. And and was it you or was it, I think it was you that told me, that look, basically looked at me. It's like, it's like white Batman. But like, white, it is. Not, not like he's a white guy, but like. He's, he's in white. He's dressed in white. Physically white. And there is, in yeah. fact, a reason that he's dressed right. in white, which yeah. we found out in the, in comic, the comic books. Yeah. Which yes. I really kind of wish he had said in the show, which is, I want them to see me. Well, right. I, I mean, yeah, this, I this really seen. smacked of more of an origin story, yeah. in, you know, on, on the Disney Plus series. Like, like, they just wanted to get it out there, show you a little bit of how it began, whereas the comic that we read is like, it's, we're pretty much dead set right in the middle. Right. And it, it pretty much is. I don't know if any of you guys read any of the older no, stuff. I, I read some Wikipedia stuff, okay. but I only read the comic that we have done. I am actually very, um, even though I'm a Marvel person, uh, Moon Knight is just a character that has completely missed me. Right. Including Werewolf by Night, which is what Moon Knight came right. from. Right. And, and frankly, it's easy to miss him because... If you look at his publication history, it had a strong volume one when he first started. But then after that, which was kind of in the middle of that time where Marvel wasn't doing so well comics-wise, it's a very sporadic publication history. He'll get six or twelve issues, and then you'll wait several years to hear from him again. So it's easy to lose him. Well, it's it's a corner... So we talk about different corners of the Marvel Universe, right? So there's like Space Marvel, and there's, you know, all of these other... Moon Knight is in horror Marvel, yeah, which definitely. is its own. Yeah, like it's like where Ghost Rider, Blade, uh, Bloodstone, those kind of Hellstrom, where those. I'm kind waiting of, for more of those. Right. Especially well, like if like if we can see like I wouldn't mind a reboot of Blade. Like the, well, right? there there will be. I mean, there is going to be because he showed up at right. the end of it. He's got the yeah the cameo. Well, cameo the voice. Vocal. Yeah. 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 At the end of Eternals, so, which, hey, spoilers, but it's Eternals. Trust me, you're not missing it. Well, it's yeah, been out long yeah. enough. Right. But, <laughs> but no, you know, I would was... have to say that I, you know, okay, I'm going to, I'm just going to go into it now. There were differences between the comic and the series that I preferred the series. And there were a couple of points that I preferred the series. And one of them was... In the comic, it's not m- mental health, it's Khonshu. Right, right, right. It's the, it it's the, the aspects I mean, of yeah, Khonshu. The, the many aspects of the yeah. deity. The four aspects Technically of Technically five. They talk about the super secret one in there. Ooh, right, yeah. right. But, but uh, Moon Knight himself is one of the personalities. Right. So I didn't care for that. I didn't care for it being white Batman. I didn't the, like it being a detective procedural working with the police. The funny thing I didn't like is it. he's much more white Batman in the early comics than he w- was on the show. And this is kind of something I pointed out to Josh, which was 
I actually really like what they did with the series in terms of separating him from Batman, which they did quite a bit because in the original uh, run uh, back in the late 80s, early 90s, he, he's pretty much Batman in a white suit. It's, it's because yeah. Mark, yeah, his Mark Spector persona was so successful right. as a mercenary that he right. has unlimited there's, wealth. There's, there's tools, there's vehicles, the, the suit right. is armor, it's not right. magic, he has a hideout. There's a helicopter, there's, he has a helicopter. He has a moon helicopter, he's got a, <laughs> a glider, he's, he's got, got a butler. He has uh, a drone, he has yeah. a self-driving so, car. Right. <laughs> They they pretty much I think they looked at all that stuff and said you know that's that's Batman why don't we why don't we get rid of a lot Distance of that and ourselves. I think they did and I and I think it was a good choice really yeah. well it's Batman it's Knight Rider it's <laughs> well yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> but yeah no I really I I preferred the series in that the you know there was Mark and there was Stephen mm-hmm. and they were two entirely separate people. You know, and, and and that they were just people that, you know, that stuff had happened to, um, well, mainly Mark, but, and then he had taken on the, the aspect of right. Moon Knight. But I just, I really liked the idea of them not being ultra wealthy or right. have lots of things at their disposal. You know, they had to really be creative in, in doing what they felt like they needed to do. Now, you know, as Moon Knight, he was basically invincible. Sure. Um, you know, he gets some protection from Khonshu. Right, and, right. You know, some super strength. Yeah, some, right. You yeah. know, he, we saw the, I think in episode three, you know, there's several stabs with several spears and he's right. able to come yeah. back from that, you know. But I also like that that was fallible. Like, Khonshu could be taken away from Mark. Right. You know, and, and I liked that aspect of it, too. Um, I also enjoyed Khonshu being a character in the series a lot more than I felt like Khonshu was a character in the comic. Although, when Khonshu shows up in the comic, it's very similar. And we should also yeah. say that the the comic we did for this was written by Warren Ellis. Mm-hmm. So, in and, of, in and of itself, and it was a very... Um, Episodic anthology. Yeah, type there was, there was a lot of was, a lot of short adventures. Yeah, there. every yeah, issue was, was a different right. adventure that right. didn't necessarily but, have a thread. Yeah, there was no continuity between anything. And, right. Like it was fine. I was like, it it was well written, and mm-hmm. but it just it didn't really speak to me because it was just like, and eh, it's just like, I kind of felt like I was watching like old school Batman. Right. Yeah. Like yes. We're yeah. just having. Yeah, I'm gonna go beat these bad guys. Sure. Now. Like, and initially, when I when I kind of absorbed the whole series, I was thinking about the dichotomy between that kind of thing, like mm-hmm. episodic adventures of Moon Knight, versus what we got in the series, which was an overarching plot plot that lasted six episodes. You know, and I I thought to myself, well, that's an interesting choice to make, simply because we kind of throw him into the deep end almost immediately in terms of fighting a larger than life villain and a and a larger than life plot that spans different continents versus what they could have done which has given him a little bit more of a and I'm not suggesting they should have done it but they could have done something like the comic where he starts out a little bit closer to home per se right right or or knowing a lot more than he knows and then the right. audience finds it out i okay getting into the series i've i've really enjoyed it yeah. but what I really enjoyed was we are discovering things about Mark and Stephen as Mark and Stephen are yes. discovering them they're, about each other they're and great. that Completely. is yeah. awesome yeah. yeah and and you know you, you someone said this was like an origin story and frankly I don't know if I want to see more Moon Knight when it's just being Moon Knight because this was ve- this is what I wanted to see um, unless there's more of, uh, oh, what's his wife's name? Layla. 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 Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the Egyptian superhero. That was which, fantastic. Which, that was such a amazing. great, that was, it was, such a it great was line. awesome. And I think the, one of the major strengths of the show is, is sort of what Jen alluded to, which is not necessarily 
the character of Moon Knight the superhero, but Mark Spector and, and, and Stephen Grant primarily, and how those two personalities interact with each other, particularly with Oscar Isaac playing both of them. Right. I think that might be a stronger selling point of the show than seeing, you know, the actual superhero aspect yes. of it. So yeah. I will say I've never been super familiar with Oscar Isaac. I mean, he's he's done a lot of roles. Right. Uh, Apocalypse is a good example. He's done a lot of roles where he's his face is in one way or another obscured. I think most notably because it's recent Dune, I've recognized him from. Well, he was I, also in Star Wars, right? In, in right. yeah, in, in in his roles in Star Wars, uh, obviously. But this was such a meaty role for him to come out and say, "I am a world class fucking actor." Yeah, he was showing his chops. Absolutely, jumping back and forth like that between those those different very characters. believable. You know, the the transitions were very believable in the sense that they were very different characters. Well, it's funny because we just watched the honest trailer before yeah. we started, and and at one point they comment on his his expressions and, and and being very expressive. And the point of that that I wanted to bring up was, it's very easy to do those facial expressions. Coming to mind, especially, is Bruce Campbell. Bruce Campbell does those kind of facial expressions, but they come off as, as What's cheesy. That? Yeah, they come off as cheesy. You want a little? <laughs> they're, they're cheesy, they're overblown. They're, but when Oscar Isaac was doing it, it, like Jen said, it seemed natural. Like, it was mm-hmm. it was a comedic response, mm-hmm. but it was a natural sure. comedic response. Like, with the when the, the hippo god shows up and both of them are screaming. Right. They're first of all, they're screaming in very two very different ways. Yep. Mm-hmm. You know, as as Mark and as right. Steven, because they're next to each other. But also one is like you know, like I'm a little girl screaming and gonna run away, and the other one is like, Oh, what the hell is that? Right. Yes. But it wasn't over the top to the point that I'm like, I'm pulled out of the scene. Mm. Bruce Campbell pulls me out of the scene every time. Because I'm laughing so hard that I'm like, oh my god, Bruce Campbell. Yeah. Well, also, um, it should be noted that Oscar Isaac's brother played... That's true. Right. The, That's true. Played one or the other character. From behind. Mm-hmm. Never, um, never... No, in... in, never. in, in uh, I think in like profile. The mir- profile. I yeah, profile. I think yeah. In, yeah. yeah, never full he, face. Because he had to wear a prosthetic nose right. to match uh, his brother's... <laughs> That's right. What did they call him? They called him... Oh, I, I don't remember. Hang on. It was, it was actually, a play on Steven. Yeah. I'm actually a really entertained to see... Like, to see them mix Moon Knight into the rest of the MCU. Sure. Like, see him get pulled in and, like, how he's going to... end Like, if the, he does, like, if and when and how he ends up interacting with the rest of the characters sure. out there. The yeah. Avengers or... The defenders, or God knows who else, you know. So uh, let me get to the to the questions that we normally have since we've started jumping in early. Justin, as a fan of Moon Knight, like one to ten, what would you say uh, you would you would rate uh, for the show? That's a show. Yes. I mean, honestly, even even I, it's weird because like I like I said, I even preferred the departures they made. Over some of the source material, I would I would definitely give it an, an eight and eight point five at least. You know, in terms of how I liked it. Bear being hesitant and knowing nothing about it. Where did you land? Uh, listen, I was, I thought this show was real sketch for like the first two into like the third episode. I was Same. just like, this better get good. Same. Real damn fast, or I, like that is I, literally something that Jen said to me after episode two. Yeah, I, I was like, like this I better get of, real good or what the hell are we even doing here? Yeah. yeah. I spent like the first two episodes with my nose down on my phone only occasionally looking up at the TV. And I I you know, as I was watching the show, I was wondering like how are people who aren't familiar with the character going to react to the show because even for me, it was kind of two episodes of the clicking, you know, as you're going up on the roller coaster. Oh yeah. And you're like, okay, well, this isn't that. I still feel like that it wasn't necessary. I mean, I still It was like... painful. Like, how bumbling Steven was. You could do that in an episode. I you still, did not need to I still to rewound it a few times of those couple episodes. Like, even though I was, like, mainly nose down on my phone. Like, I still rewound it here and there. I was like, wait a minute. 
what was that? You know, I I missed no something flashed on the screen there. I need to I need to go back and look right. at this. I will say um, there are things in the first two episodes that are background, yes. which is yeah. an amazing. You know, Justin, you, you you and I are both horror movie fans. Sure. Yeah. Uh, Jen goes along for the ride with me, but there are certain ones that she gets into. But my favorite horror movie scare is not jump scares. It's something has happened in the background, and if you missed it, you just yeah. oh, fucking absolutely. missed it. Yeah. Absolutely. I love it. Uh, and Moon Knight employs that. Yeah. Um, surprisingly, no spoilers, but uh, so does the new Doctor Strange. Uh, because I've not it's, seen it yet. Because it's, it's, it's Sam Raimi. It's, it's Sam it's fucking Raimi. Yeah. It's very good. Keep um, the hopes high. Uh, you, yeah. they and and on the subject of movies, by the way, and gods, uh, this episode will drop on July 8th, which is the day that Thor Love and Thunder comes out. Um, so we may actually see some of the gods introduced in Moon Knight in that, since the whole plot is, is I was really god killer. with their gods, too, because they didn't do, like, it wasn't like, um, uh, Asgardians, right? Which these were kind of the pseudo-gods. Yeah, these know? are just, yeah. like, like... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like incorporeal entities that have phenomenal cosmic power, yeah. but they have to have an avatar, avatar to yeah. like pump their energy through. Before we get to that, I've already said I very much enjoyed it. I would probably give it a, a, an eight point five mm-hmm. or a nine. I I really enjoyed this one, but Jen, I saved you for last because you had a very complicated relationship <laughs> with this show. Yeah. I, I really, um, you know, I struggled with the first couple of episodes. Um, you know, I think that, like I said, I really do think they did a disservice to Steven's character in the first couple of episodes mm-hmm. because there was no reason to make him almost unlikable. It, almost you know? incompetent to yeah. the point where yes. he would die if, if right. Art like, wasn't saved. Right. Yeah. I, I really think okay. they could have gotten sure. that across without forcing us to go through that much sure. pain. Um, and they could have taken the time for that. Like, let's say they instead of two episodes, they only did that in one. That leaves an entire other episode to explore the other avatars, right. the other gods, like this world. Right. And now. Yeah. I would say if you were a viewer that was unaware of what you were watching and you were unaware that Oscar Isaac was the primary actor in this movie who would be, like, if you didn't know he was Moon Knight, that would be okay. Those first two episodes would be completely plausible because you need to set that up. Why is he doing this? What's going on? But you know this, like you know, meta, you know (laughs) what's happening. And you know this, man! (laughs) So, that's why it was painful to me. It's like, come on. We gotta get there. There is no, there's no mystery. We understand that, he. you know, there's something that he's, he's blacking out, there's something here. Why are you hitting me over the head with this? Jen wanted just a little less foreplay. Well, but that's <laughs> but talk about from episode three on because right, but you are not somebody that's like is it is it the day did it drop? <laughs> yeah, I and I don't know. I honestly I don't think I could pinpoint what it was. But after episode three, I was totally invested. Mm-hmm. You know, I was really interested in the characters. I loved that. Um, you know, he didn't just, you know, Stephen didn't just magically get out of all of the shit that right. happened in the museum. He, like, had, there were repercussions. Right. He got fired. He, like, shit, his life went to shit. The life that he knew as Stephen went to shit. Layla was a, an incredibly strong female character, you know, and I think that there were a lot of people who voiced disappointment over the series, and I, to them, I would say, but why? <laughs> you right. know, what 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 was it about that series that you were disappointed in? What did you come there for? It did not that follow the get? rest of the Marvel formula. I, I think, and I think actually, Bear makes a good point that 
it's not as formulaic and it is it can seem disjointed even though we kind of now with with hindsight know what happens episodes one through six it's not the typical way you're expecting right. a Marvel story to be told. It's true. I will say I, on purpose, did not rewatch it before we recorded this episode, but I want to. Mm-hmm. I, I, I want to see time, knowing. Yeah, I want yeah, to go back to knowing what I know now and knowing the entire arc. Are the first two episodes more bearable, yeah. and and mm-hmm. do they have things that contribute? to the, the further plot forward. The other thing that we're finding out is that Jake was in every episode. Right. right. In right. one way or another, yes. Jake right. was in every yes. episode, and now I want to go and be like, okay. Yeah. Because I'm pretty sure that it was Jake uh, after Mark took over, uh, but before Stephen wakes up in right. his bed in the museum. Yep. You know, and that's, that's what I... And that's why I think the first two were so slow, is... For a rewatch, yeah, like looking. Back I will on say it. I rewatched the the first half. I haven't rewatched the whole series. But okay, those, those first couple yeah. episodes, I d- I did rewatch those. Were they more enjoyable the second I, time? I liked them. Yeah, yeah, I would say yes. I would. Say I mean, I would go back and watch them. Um, I mean, and that's like saying a lot because yeah. you, like because you didn't like this them is, at yeah. first. well, yeah. but and also then, this is less than a year since she watched them, and she is not a rewatch. <laughs> I yeah, I'm not. That I've watched person, I but I very... also I also have to say, and you know, I have to like confess, but I love storylines where the main character is an unreliable narrator. I yes. will say I, I love yeah. that, and we discussed this. Yeah, this had elements of Legion. In it, yeah, yeah. I it was, had, well, I it had seen, elements of I holy motors, and I wasn't. I wasn't. That's a great movie. Yeah, yeah. And and it it has that that element of you have your main character doesn't know what's real, yeah. what they're actually seeing, what they're experiencing. Are they dreaming it? Whatever. I mean, I love that. And shit. see that that's not that's I think the reason why I didn't like in the beginning because I wasn't like if I expect that going in like the first time I watched Memento. I loved that movie, and I had very strong memento vibes on this after I realized, oh, hey, yes, those exact words, unreliable narrator. Um, so it was memento, it was legion, it was, you know... Well, not... But unreliable narrator in a different way than normal. Because yes. we're yeah, following yeah. Steven's journey in the first couple episodes, he just blacks out. It's not like we go to Mark and then Steven's confused. We follow Steven. Yeah. yeah. Right. So until we start following until, Mark. Until Mark talks to him in the mirror yeah. at the end of the second. I think it's second, two. Yeah, I think it's in the, the second episode. Yeah. So we have gone this far, and I think that's what it is. That's why the first two episodes are structured the way they are. Is it's intentionally supposed to make you be like, okay, Steven's my character, whatever. And then Mark starts to talk to him, and you're like, oh, this is the person that when he blacks out... This is what's happening. Right. right. And then from there on, they're they're having a conversation. Right. But But not always. Now we're following two people. Right. Right. But right. occasionally we get them together. Did you do that? Yeah. I didn't do that. Right. You yeah. did that. I know you did that. Right. right. Because there's only two of us. Right. Ah. Right. Yeah. Um again, the way that they structured it, I really, really enjoyed. Um, but uh, my my only uh, relationship or, or, or way that I can um, uh, empathize is on I have a Facebook uh, uh, post where I just talked very vaguely about Moon Knight and one of my friends whose father has disassociative uh, identity, disorder. identity identity disorder um, said he watched it the first couple episodes with his father and his father actually started crying because that is exactly what it's like. Like up until the point where Mark starts to talk to Steven, like you just, it's like alcohol blackouts. Like you lose no, periods well, of time. I, I, yeah. I, haven't, I don't, I don't know dissociative identity disorder, but I've had several alcohol blackouts and I'm not sure that those are the same. Because I might eventually get some of those memories, memories back yeah. from a blackout, alcohol yeah. blackout moment. Yeah. Well, okay. 
Yeah, but it's like but losing without, time. Yeah, it's it's yeah. losing like, time. Losing time. Yeah. But uh, instead of I'm me, but just a alcohol induced version of me that my mind has just been like, we don't need to keep any of this. Which thank you, mind. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, it is instead a whole other person, and yeah. you know that's that's scary. You know, it it is, and they really showed that in the show in the earlier parts of it to show that this is a mental disorder this is something that is well, serious it, it for affects a lot of his whole life in the sense that yes. there's no stability whatsoever right you see that with the way he has to sleep and right. and all this other stuff and you know that that would that would the yeah, stress the, levels misses the date right. you know the, like, the oh. misses like oh it's friday you know yeah. it's friday it's right. steak time yeah but no it's not well and, and people in even Kanchu keeps like kind of rubbing salt in the wound. Yeah, because, like he's kind of a... at what at one point Kanchu like to Mark is like you told me this wasn't going to be a problem, which you know thinking about it you're like fuck you, right. dude. <laughs> you know, one very you... specific scene with him that kind of I don't I don't know if it was supposed to annoy the viewer or if it was supposed to be played for comedy was the scene where Harrow is on trial because immediately prior to that. Kanshu gives Mark a talking to, and he's like, we gotta bring our A-game if we put Harrow on trial. And then because, fucking and Kanchu's, then Kanchu's the one that like, fucks it all like, up. Like, right. he has nothing to offer, and he completely messes as, everything. As soon as I'm they like, were like, we're gonna put him on trial, I'm like, oh, this is gonna like, be like, I'm like every dude, why other, did you? you know, like, air quotes, trial. You're like, what am I watching? Seen, episode like, four. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, it's gonna happen. It's like, you know, you know, we already know what's gonna happen before this trial even right. goes. Like, Kanchu's gonna open his damn mouth. And getting, you know, and nothing's going to happen to the dude. He's going to be like, oh, I didn't do anything. Which, actually, you know, I can relate to. I think it's, I, to answer your question, I think it was supposed to be both. Okay. Um, right. The comedic aspect is that Kanchu is this god. He has lived for thousands of years. He's this, he's this entity. And, uh, all of a sudden. Still kind of a child. Yeah. And. He yeah. doesn't understand. Yeah. Well, and, and I think that I, Kanshu did also make a comment like once where he, um, when when he and Mark were talking about when um, Kanshu found him mm -hmm. right before he died, and you know Kanshu said something about like I saw something in you, right, and what. My interpretation after seeing the whole series is what Kanchu saw was the DID. Super the, the, the susceptible individual. Well, super and... susceptible individual, but different personalities right. that Kanchu could take advantage of. And, and, I, and I, if he has multiple aspects anyways. Right. right, and I think that's completely... Can we mold each one of these? completely accurate because now he doesn't necessarily have to look for different avatars at different times he's already got access to several that, that have can... different sets of skills right. Right. right so moving to the comic we're going to do something a little different because again it is a an anthology comic and everything's a little different sure if somebody watched moon knight the show would you recommend this comic to them? Justin, I'm going to wait for you last because you have read a bunch of Moon Knight. Quite a bit, yeah. So, Bear, I'll start with you. Would I recommend this comic to them? The one that we read, yep. I don't think so. I don't think I would recommend this one. I don't think it's a bad comic, but I don't think it really showcases much. Like, we get some snippets here and there about, like, him... Like talking to doctors about you know his DID and um, they actually, I mean spoiler alert in the comics they they say that he actually doesn't have DID. Right, it's caused by Kanchu. Right. Yeah, it's actually caused by him. Um, and so you you get a little bit of backstory mixed in there, but it's just it. I mean, it's a super fast read and it's it's good stuff. And there's even a couple of points in here like like things that I wanted to see like in uh, it was like. The end of issue five, which was Scarlet, the girl that was kidnapped. Mm -hmm. Like you get up to the, t you know, he gets up to the top, and it's the last guy, and he's like, "Here's the gun pointed at their head." Like, and we so we get that hostage situation, and this is the one time that I've actually seen the good guy be like, 
you know, pull the anti-hero card, and it's just like, listen, they've already written her off as dead, so if you kill her, you're killing off the only thing that's going to keep me from killing you. We should you mention, know, what, uh, if you have not seen the, uh, the post that shows the cover, this is From the Dead. Is the name of the? the it's a 2014 novels. run, I believe. Yep, with and Warren Ellis, Warren Ellis volume yeah. one. Yeah. and and Moon Knight had not been a comic for six years before at, this. At least that, yeah. There yeah. was a previous. Uh, I think it was a 12 issue run, which is kind of in, well. I'll, I'll get to that. Yeah. Later. Right. Well, anyways, like long story short, too late. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't think that this is would be something that I would recommend somebody like ju- like to myself. Like I wouldn't recommend past me go read this because like I, I watched the show and I'm like the show is really great. I want to see some more, but it, reading this, even though I do like Warren Ellis, was just not what I was looking for to get more background on the character. So I'll say to give our audience kind of a how the sausage gets made. Um, obviously, when I come into the situation like this. Um, Either I will ask the the guest if they are familiar. I did not in this case because we didn't know who our guest was right away. Um, but I will go and I will find top ten lists because if anything comes out as a TV series, what have you, there will be a top ten list that of comics that you should read about this character. And this on, I want to say five of the six lists I read was the number one. Hmm. Really? That actually surprises me, too, a little bit. Yeah. I mean, it was good. Don't get me wrong. Right. No, it just... And and the, the, the one aspect that I pulled from the comic, which I've already said, so, you know, spoiler, but... Uh, is the fact that he wears white because he wants to see yes, he wants his enemies to see him yep. coming as opposed to Batman that hides in shadows right. yeah. when I, I love it because there are several people that are like but you're wearing white they're gonna see you and he's like that's the part yeah. I like that's yeah, the it's part I like it's easier to clean the blood off you know. well it's if, not if, well, <laughs> <laughs> but Jen would you uh, would you recommend this comic to people that like uh, the show um. Again, I, I agree with Bear. I thought I thought the comic was good, but no. If someone liked the show, the comic is not going to give them the same flavor that the show gave. I mean, you would you would imagine that the comic would be. Um, I'm trying to think. Okay, so like Sandman. You know how there are episode or issues of Sandman where they're talking about a specific culture, right? And they talk about like everyday life in the culture. Sure. They talk yeah. about like the gods and what you know what have. And that's kind of what the show was. It was like you know this this is Egyptian culture. These are little things, and it wasn't like an educational primer of what Egyptian culture was or is. But it was that kind of an idea. You know what I mean? It was like talking about yeah. the Egyptian gods, what have you. And this comic was like, I mean, it felt fairly generic to me. Yeah. Moon Knight could have been anyone. These were these were random mission files put right. to color. Right. Yeah. I, kind I of just, like Punisher War Journal kind of stuff. Which we didn't read War Journal yeah. for our upcoming Punisher episode, but... It's 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 the same way. It's Punisher in an anthology, like it's episodic. Yeah. Um, without really a, a, a thread. Yeah, there was throughout. no connecting thread. Things were, the stories were super short. They weren't very deep. I mean, some of them are literally just Moon Knight kicking ass through a building right. until he's kicked everybody's ass. Right. And then he goes home. So. Well, one more thing though, I wanted to say was. In the comic, they really don't talk about who Moon Knight is, but they do have like conversations with other people about, oh, I saw he was back in town, kind of stuff like sure. alluding to sure. a past that you don't get any. Right. And that, well, that's the other thing is every superhero knows who Moon Knight is. Like, that's, and, and that knows was the graphic that they, novel that I wanted, though. Right. 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 It, how they all. Knew, yeah. knew who he was. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah, because every superhero knows who Moon Knight is, 
none of them particularly like no. him. And I and, know uh, from the sounds of this one, didn't really seem like anybody really wanted to acknowledge his existence unless they had yes. to. Right. right. Uh, with the Mr. Knight personality. Right. Um, um, okay, so Justin, you've actually read a lot more Moon Knight. Is there a specific instance that you would more recommend to yeah, people? Yeah, there, there are two, actually. And to, to preface this, though, like Jin and like Bear, I think this comic is good. It's Absolutely. just it's just not where I would say, hey, if you like that show, go read this. It's now. not a starting point. Yeah, don't, it's probably down the line. It's more middle ground. The other the, the two I would recommend happen one is before this and one is after it because there's a, I believe it's a 2017 run where he is in a mental institution and it assumes that everything that he is saying to his psychiatrist is fake. That where, is actually number two on most where, of the list where, that I read. That it is, was between this yeah. one and that one. And had I really known, Warren Ellis pulled me in. I, sure, I one hundred percent say, sure. you know, I have a I have a, a thing for Warren Ellis. He wrote Transmetropolitan. Sure. I fucking love him. Um, and that was that was the the coin flip there. But the other one, yes, because a lot of that was taken right. for the show. And so that's a good one because it will then expand on that, including Egyptian mythology and things like that. The other one happens, I believe, way back in 2006. And the reason I would recommend it is because you get a lot more into the psyche of Mark Spector because his personalities then change not into uh, Stephen Grant and Jake Lockley and the others, but he, he swaps them for weird versions of Captain America, Spider-Man, and Wolverine. Which they allude to in the comic that we yes. read. Right, yes, yes, they do allude to that. And I would recommend also, either of those two is, I think, a good, decent starting point for someone who liked the series and, and wants to read more. Inside you is a Captain America, a Spider-Man, and a Wolverine. You are Moon Knight. <laughs> yeah. Basically. And fun fact, uh, the villain Taskmaster, who can copy anybody, he doesn't want to copy Moon Knight at all. Because he thinks Moon Knight is much more comfortable taking punches than throwing them. In a masochistic sort of way. So he refuses to copy Moon Knight's fighting style. That's because he doesn't want to get this shit beat yeah. out of him. <laughs> Moon Knight doesn't care. Taskmaster's like, I'm not, I'm not up for that. I'll stick with, you know, all the other guys I've copied. That's awesome. Yeah. So, um, any other points that anybody wants to hit on Moon Knight? I mean, this was a fantastic series. I'm excited if this is, you know, if we consider the the first three, well, four. If we consider WandaVision, Loki, Captain America and the Winter Soldier and the first season of What If to kind of be the first arc of Marvel TV, um, I'm excited to see this Ms. Marvel, She-Hulk, and I'm the second season She-Hulk. of What If. Well, yeah. yes. Yeah. You I'm excited be. for She-Hulk. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I just... Uh, I am excited in general. I think this is going to be pretty awesome. But I think the biggest risk was, uh, out of all of these, was Moon Knight. Yeah, definitely. And if they could hit Moon Knight out of the park, fuck yeah. We were talking about uh, the the other comics that we didn't read for this show. Right. Um, I would definitely be interested in, in the... Uh, the one I think it's the one you mentioned that was where he's in uh, an institution. Yeah, that, that would be the next. I would month. be interested in both. Yeah, of the ones that you uh, mentioned. Yeah, because I just like the idea of it's, somebody with the personalities of Captain America, well, Spider Man, and what's okay. really? I, but okay, I'm sorry, I'm going to interrupt because <laughs> that was one of the things that I really loved about the TV show. It did not have anything to do with any other fucking superheroes it was self-contained and i thought that that was excellent and, and yet it was better than the eternals it was self-contained <laughs> and i think that i would like to see the the that run in where sure. he's in a mental institution sure. no, it's, it's a and one. i feel like it would be 
not similar, but it would have a, a, a like a it, feel of Legion. It, it will have yeah. a similar feel yeah. to that, yes. And the funny thing about the other run that I mentioned with the other, they're not there, and that's kind of what's cool about it. Right. Is they're not there. There's just these floaty heads of Captain America and Wolverine and Spider-Man kind of floating around, whispering in his ear. He makes weapons to do stuff like they can do, yeah. to simulate. Yeah. Like, it's it's really weird. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, what? I was like, I, I went back and I was like, did I miss something in between? How did he split off into the different superheroes? Why did they choose these three? But it's, it's pretty interesting. So... I actually yeah. have a question for you. Do you think, you know, you're saying that uh, the other one, the other graphic novel that happens after this one that we read was in the institute. Do you would you in your guesstimation assume that that's probably where they drew the source material? Probably from the quite scenes? a bit because we deal with a different crocodile-headed deity. Actually, it's not this one, but it is a different one. And then the main villain that they choose for that arc mm. is very similar to what they did with Ethan Hawke in terms of aesthetic okay. and and stuff like that. the The plot doesn't play out exactly like like this, but right. I think. Heavy influence was drawn from the 2017 arc that I mentioned about. Awesome. Mm, yeah, okay. so it's it's a good one. Very cool. So, um, Justin, I mean, I'm I'm gonna guess that this is going to be a a foregone conclusion, but will you continue to read Moon Knight? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So Bear, new Moon Knight series comes up. You you interested in picking it up? I I think I am. I I don't know like. How I'm gonna feel about it, like, cause, like I said, I, I kind of view this as like an origin story, so I'm kind of wondering where they're gonna take it, what they'll do with it. But I'll watch it because, I mean, I, I was interested. It finally caught me and yeah. it hooked me. I'm super excited to hear how many people, just general, you know, space, are talking about how interested they were in the show. Cause I watched it and I was like, I don't know how many new viewers are gonna enjoy this. Right. Was like, as a fan of the the character, I'm like. I just don't know how, how new viewers are going to react to that. And apparently a lot of people have enjoyed it. So I thought that was great. Well, and I think that the, the important part is people have to stick past the first two episodes. Sure. It's, you know, as we've talked about a lot yeah, on this show, it it's episode 17 of uh, the first season of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Which is so hard. You made me, you made me promise to watch through 17 episodes and, but of Agents the, of Shield, the payoff and I, I told good. you, I told you, you only had to watch seven episodes of Gotham, and and I ended up watching all but the last season, and I'm going to watch the last season. I just haven't had. Oh time. man, I, I guess it's not really spoilers. I like that show, but do you feel it doesn't? Do you feel it's not as good as it goes on? Oh yeah, now okay. it's okay. it's it's a. It's a bunch of rubbing your dick with no coming. Okay. It's like it really, really is. <laughs> because it's... I, I, I really so like. So eloquent. I like the show overall, but I was like, after I got done with it, especially season five, I think. Right, which season. is the one that I haven't watched. Uh, and it, it, you know, it, it got. Obviously, it didn't get to the point where I just quit watching it because I watched the whole thing. Right. But I was like, well, for some weird reason, you know, one and two are kind of the best, and then it starts to. Uh, right? Just so you know, dear listener, they're talking about Gotham. Yeah, I guess I should be clear. <laughs> about we said, that. we said that. <laughs> we followed. I'm, I'm also kind of interested in because I've seen most, but not all of Agents of Shield. Why have you discussed on the show? Why up to episode seventeen? Why does it take? No, and it's not really a, uh, a spoiler at this point. So, so right. this I, show I, is I, like I, ten years old. Right, right. Yeah. Um, the first season. They had to pace it to um, catch up to Winter Soldier. To oh. Captain, or, I'm sorry. No. Yeah, Captain America Winter Soldier. Right. So the fact that they couldn't do the breakdown of S.H.I.E.L.D. and the rise of HYDRA until episode 17 of the show coincided with the release of the movie. Oh. And they had to plan all that in advance. Now, right. what that does That was is, a choice. Right. What that does is normally you do five to ten episodes of world building before you break the world. Sometimes a full season, but for sure. something like this. Sure. And that was the world-breaking episode, but because of scheduling, you had to have an extra seven episodes of procedural... Okay. Kind Just of kind like of, cop I mean, show yeah, in the Marvel powers. Universe. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Okay. Now, 
I will say what that does, it is establishes certain characters. I will not break the one that it yeah. establishes to be the breakout star of every season they are fucking in. Mm -hmm. Because that character and that actor are amazing. And if I did not have as long as I did, it wouldn't have been as impactful. Um, if you had for, 10 versus 17 or something. Right. Like yeah. right. Um, okay. I mean, because, I, have to, I have to say that when I finally sat down and did it, when I finally went through that 17 episode slog, from that point, I was on the edge of my seat until we hit. Okay. I yeah. think it was like literally, like I could not stop watching the show. Like it's like 3 a.m. and I'm like, I can get one more episode. Yeah. <laughs> um, A lot of people say the construct or the the cyber. Yeah, world. that the season where you get into the the basically the matrix. Yeah. Uh, was. Like, it had, the first episode was good, and the last episode was good, because it was finally over, plus you get to see a little Ghost Rider, and that was it. Like, well, that whole season yeah. was garbage. Because they also do half seasons, basically, one plot, then another plot. So they did half a plot of people in the Matrix, the other half of the plot was Ghost Rider. Yeah. I do remember the, the Ghost only, Rider stuff. Yeah. No, I thought was, was, Ghost Rider was really only there for, like, maybe, it was only in, like, three episodes. Oh, okay. Um... But, but it was yeah. the coolest three episodes well, I mean, you've was, ever seen of Ghost yeah. Rider. No, Robbie Reyes is, is a fantastic Ghost Rider, and I love that actor and uh, that that played Robbie Reyes. And uh, yeah, I am I am one hundred percent. I love Ghost Rider with a muscle car as opposed to the motorcycle. Yeah, oh, that was cool. But um, so, Jet. Back to, back to Moon Knight. Yeah, I was going to say, future episodes, tune in for us just randomly <laughs> talking about whatever the fuck we feel like. Uh, well, we'll talk about that soon. It's not the first time, it's just that this time we kind of Are you interested sober, in so. future Moon Knight comic books? Um, well, I'll say this. I will, go, I, would, I will go back and read the 2017 run. I would like to read that one as well. I, I don't know. I don't know if I'll read future. Maybe. Okay. Maybe. Maybe if he's in a big storyline of future Rec conversations. Sure. <laughs> um, so we're going to, uh, first of all, Justin, thank you for Thanks for having me once again. It's Absolutely. always fun to be on the, on the show. Coming out this weekend and, and, and hanging out with us and, and taking some time to record some shit. Um, but uh, this is where we're going to get a little, uh, a little deep on where this show is going. So this season we'll have the normal 12 episodes we'll be doing it on the normal um, shows that have come out um, hitting so a lot of new stuff. Hitting a lot of new stuff um, but we've sat down and we've kind of looked at it and realized that there is a backlog of stuff that we could do. It involves things like R.I.P.D. and Please no. a bunch of other shit that you guys don't want us to do it. We don't want to do it. Right. Yeah. It's it's been out there for so long, and no one has said, "Oh my gosh, we really, really would love to hear you guys talk about." R.I.P.D. Right. And so, which should have should have been so much better. The stars right. that oh, were in R.I.P.D. And I mean, the, pre the premise itself was was cool sounding, yeah. and then you you, you go with that, and, and then like, like it died yeah. in script. No, I. Jen and I lasted. Ten minutes into that movie, I watched and it all. And shut it. I've, I've every seen minute it of all. It. I've seen it all. Yeah. yeah, I am generally not the type of person that you know says turn this bullshit off. Sure. Um, she, the, the, that is a quote. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even think you did that when we watched like the Nick Cage Ghost Riders. Yeah. So not in order, but here's some of the stuff we're going to do this season, just because it is. The stuff that we wanted to do before we we move to the next phase. Um, we're going to be doing Logan. Uh, which was supposed to be like a season which, two? Three. Three? Yeah. yeah. Um, we're going to be doing Black Lightning. Um, which, the reason that we've held off on it is we wanted a person of color um, to really be on the show for the representation. Um, and we But also not... we would just love to have more diversity on the show. Right. Yeah. Agreed. Um, but we have yet to find 
Uh, Listen, a, we don't a, have any black friends, and we feel bad about ourselves. Or if that. the ones that I do don't read comic books. Right. So that's that's the intersection there. Um, we'll be doing Resident Alien, which is a hilarious show. I still want to watch it. I, I want to see it. Yeah, yeah. I also haven't seen it. Uh, the Punisher, Peacemaker. Oh my god, Peacemaker. DMZ, um, Hawkeye. Tales from the Crypt, which is it's, it's it's something that I've wanted to do since season one. Uh, Captain America, finally. Morbius and Shang Chi. Um, so so a lot of more recent stuff mixed in with some stuff that we just wanted to make sure that we do. Next season, so uh, season eight is only going to be things that are our the three of us, uh, Bear Jen and I, our personal favorites. So, you're going to see Spider-Man for me. You're going to see Hulk for Bear. You're gonna, Sandman will be out by that point. Yes. It, and that's on Jen's list. Yes. Um, we, might even, we might even finally squeeze in the Superman episode in season eight. Maybe. We'll Maybe. see. We'll see. Um, I mean, like, Harley Quinn. In, in, uh, we, we've discussed Birds of Prey. And we did Suicide Squad, the first one, but Harley Quinn has a lot of other aspects Media. to her yeah. that that, yeah. that we want to tackle, like the um, car, the comic or the cartoon, the animated series. Yes, so fucking good. Right, it's it's excellent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So so that may be multiple episodes to get through those, especially for the larger ones like Hulk and Spider Man. Um, and then we we are kind of gonna go not silent, but we're gonna release things kind of when we feel like it. When something comes out that grabs our attention, and we say we should do a show on that, or when we figure that you desperately want to hear what our opinion is on that. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the the twenty of you that uh, listen <laughs> consistently. Still listen to yeah. Um, but the other part is, we're going to drop the graphic novel part of this. So we're going to just talk about whatever the fuck we want. Yep. Uh, definitely there's going to be at least one Dune episode. Which will probably involve Jason Taylor. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, definitely, uh, well, not definitely, but we have been kicking around the idea of doing several James Bond episodes. Just Ooh, because yeah. the history of Bond is something that all three of us love in different ways um you know and some some of those other you know weird kind of uh geek niche uh areas that we're gonna open it up a lot more do you mean ultraman ultraman is <laughs> ultraman yeah. I, I gotta say i've watched what the first and second episodes of Ultraman, but I've never... The, well, of the live action. Of the, of the, li the first, first live, live action. action. Because there's a whole Ultraman, and Ultraman is Jen's first love. Right. So, it is possible that Quite we literally. May, yes. <laughs> it is possible we may do some Ultraman stuff. I mean, we want to open it up and not just do things to check it off of a list. We want to... We want to do things that at least one of us are passionate about and and take you on the journey where we introduce each other to things that we like. Um, so yeah, uh, that's that's kind of what the future of Graphically Novel is. And when we do that, um, Rec Conversations will still be, um, because it's a more sustainable uh, podcast, we will still be doing that. So that will be consistent. Graphically novel after the next two seasons, maybe a little more every once in a while or whenever we feel like releasing an episode or whenever we get around to releasing episodes. So um, if there are things that you would like to suggest or you would like to be, you know, hey, you guys should talk about Dark Crystal. Or you should talk about... I would like, talk about Dark Crystal. Well, we just watched Willow last night, so that's... You know, that kind of thing is fresh I in my mind. I think we should do just an entire episode on movies about kaiju. <laughs> there yes! You go. I'm here for it. Right? Right. Um, but, yeah, if you have those ideas and you would like to be a guest on it, graphicallynovel at gmail.com. Just throw us a, an yeah. email. Um, I mean, Alex and I could do an entire season on the Godzilla movies. 
Well, but which one? Are you talking about the Godzilla yes. movies that mix with Kong now? Because yes. that yes. has been a whole... Because yes. then we get to talk, talk about Skull Island. Right. And that may be the greatest King Kong movie I've ever seen in my life. Exactly. So, yeah, I'm talking yeah. about the original. I'm talking about the new ones. Talk talking about Kaiju. Can we also talk about Pacific Rim? Yes! <laughs> yes! Oh my god, that movie's so bad. So, you are, now, you are now seeing the conversations that we're having behind the scenes on this. So, I hope you all are as excited as we are about the future of this show. Um, we do kind of want to open it up and uh, talk about things that we love. So, uh Maybe I maybe I'll start a gardening podcast. Okay. That means... <laughs> Just kidding. <Yeah. laughs> but until then, take it away, Vandella. novel but the same old trouble villains always knocking at the door pretty pictures on the page but nothing ever stays the same come at me now show you something never seen before right or wrong oh can't we all just get along my mask is no different than yours pretty pictures on the screen but nothing's ever as it seems